I'll show you later because I don't think we're going to have time to demonstrate it. But this is the right arm on the uh, Talon 440. This is the second last suit in the series, the ballistic suits. Um, this local military, this is built for uh, SWAT units. And more they just got their own for uh, high school shooting and stuff like that. If you want to see SWAT in one of these, riot control, um, special forces would wear one of these suits. Uh, head to toe, it covers 97% of the body. Uh, about 90% flexibility. It'll stop uh, armor piercing, um, IEDs, and uh, yeah, it's unbelievable. It covers it. It took a lot, a lot of years, basically 23 years from those suits to here. Uh, the technology in this is just absolutely extraordinary. And if I had time, I'd, I'd, I'd show it to you. This, I'll, this I'll show it to you. Uh, this, this is, uh, yeah, I'll never say It's like my son said, you know, I've done it. Project Ruby has been my oxymoron, so to speak, uh, but in a good way. Uh, I've said many of these, like I say, I shoot straight. I don't, you know, I don't talk like a right back. I've the same thing that I've said to Mr. Lynch many, many times. Men's genes, absolutely, uh, as my father said, uh, a maverick. Uh, that's why it's Tarantino's uh, favorite uh, documentary. I've stated on the uh, Charlie Rose show. There's a reason. Men's absolutely visionary. Who the hell wants to pay eight, ten bucks to go to a theater? I mean, a theater, theater. They, they sold out around the world. I, I was in theaters showing this stuff. Uh, 1,200, they had to switch theaters and get, you know, 12, 13 people. Why? I'm, 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 I'm a natural resource technologist. I, I'm a, you know, better behavioral specialist. I'm not going to spend ten bucks to go see a documentary. He knew that. So he made a documentary that was just, that had it all. It was, you just look at it, it's just, you know, unbelievable. Now, the oxymoron comes where I would have liked to have had three or four minutes. Uh, in the documentary uh, of the science behind it, you know, as MIT said, Hercules ain't no hick out of the country. But you don't know that unless I get up in the lecture now. You don't see that in the documentary. Now, I've never been disrespected by the public. I've been all over the world and I've seen it. They've always been respectful to me, but they see an eccentric um, in a funny suit with a vendetta against the grizzly bear when they watch it. You don't see a lot of the science. I am the world's foremost authority on their turn phrase that you can buy anywhere you want. When companies come to me to test them. Do they work? No, so don't bring them into the bush. <laughs> For human beings, great. Uh, my wife carries them, and I carry them in the bush with the two legged animals, but no, they don't work. Um, the suit was built for a lot of other things, science wise. Now, the oxymoron is it's because of that movie from this brilliant director that Harvard University got a hold of me, uh, the Ignobles. And it was through the Ignobles that I had now received a lifetime pass to lecture at Harvard and MIT, which I have many, many times, both uh, great institutions, for all of my other technologies. God liked everything else that's come from the suits, everything else that I do in that. So an oxymoron, and it, it didn't give the science that I would have liked in the documentary, but from it, it gave me Harvard University. So, and this is what I do in the process. Um, what we're gonna do right now, um, yeah, I was a little nervous. This is, we've done the lab test and that, and the reason why this was going to David Letter this year, going to Letter to show you. But having some intellect, I looked at it and said three minutes on Letterman would not facilitate the true technology. I mean, it's like a dog and pony show, get up there and my brother hits me and everybody's looking and saying, what is this guy's kind of a nutcase? Here at least I'm able to explain the technology uh, when it comes. Um, this is a full helm to the S-Series, uh, the suit itself, uh, for SWAT and military. Now, now this is five years old, this helm. The attachment doesn't look like this at all. The major problem with all these helms Captain Keith Cunningham, General in the field, actual colonels. Uh, I went to the boys in Iraq and that, and I would give them the helmets, sharp teams and that, and I'd see them put it on. How am I coming along? And the one um, problem that was always there, uh, I mean, this has got all the bells and whistles, right? This is uh, uh, air conditioning, top to bottom, uh, directional air mics. Um, it's uh, solar uh, power, as it's sold. Uh, energy system on the back, uh, laser tracking system, uh, that's for chemical warfare, uh, the charcoal breathing apparatuses, and that's all there. This is really bullet. As you can see, there's a lot of bullet holes in there. Bullets are still inside the helmet. Shotgun 76251. There's no helmet in the world other than mine, especially my Apache that can handle a 761 uh, directly to the head. There, there is none. This has been shot to hell. But the reason why I'm demonstrating this is the BBCT, which is the ballistic breakaway crumple technology, which is built into the facial. 
bullets are, are an easy part, very, very easy to stop. Bullets is not a big deal. This, this, my homes can eat bullets all day long. That's not what kills. I also got a brother that's a cop. See, I'm stuck in the middle, because I know the technology that they make these poor bastards wear, like my brother in the military, my brother that's a cop, OPP up in Moose Jaw. It, it's terrible. You, you have no idea that, oh, man, it's, it, it's monstrous uh, what, what, what they make our boys wear. To explain hydraulic shock, as my wife says, you know, you lecture all the time, Dave, but people don't understand. So help them understand hydraulic shock. Everybody understands a cop in the field, you know, Tim Horton Donuts. They have a vest on it. It's 22 layers of Kevlar. It's very light. That's called soft body armor. That can't handle long rifles. A long rifle is a sharpshooter rifle, a, a deer rifle. They can't handle those bullets. Can handle a nine millimeter, which is what a cop wears, 357 Magnum. And to make my demonstration more potent, if I took a cop, any cop, and stood him here on this stage and took a 12 gauge shotgun, firing a one ounce Sabbath slug, that's an incredible powerful, not bird shot, a one ounce Sabbath slug, that'll go through an elephant. If I shot that cop point blank range, he'd be dead. But it wouldn't be the bullet to kill him. See, the first two layers of Kevlar would grab that slug and eat it up like it was nothing. That's called a cold stop. It's the hydraulic shock, you see, blow all his insides out. You talk to many a cop, as I have, and our boys in the fields with their armor, they get shot, and they live, and they're screwed for the rest of their lives. Hydraulic shock. Well, it took 22 years talking with some of the greatest neurosurgeons in the world. 22 years. You saw all those hits to my face? I like to so pretty articulate. It works. I'm here for a reason, people, because my suits work. Well, it took 22 years to get that technology, which I'm going to demonstrate now. The Apache, and as I said, claustrophobic. See, I jump around a lot, but when I gave this to all the boys in the field, every single one of them said, man, you know, it's really great, Troy. You know, all these bells and whistles and gadgets. Damn, it's claustrophobic. That's why you don't see a Marine in the field. Canadian soldiers, special forces, even SWAT, they had half helms. It's like World War I. That's all they've got is half helms. You can't cover the face, people. Number one, it, they get flagged. That's my brother, military. It's, it's against military code to take, if you had a full helmet on, like, you know, Halo, everybody watches, you know, Iron Man, stuff like that. You can't take the helmet off and have your cigarette or have a, have a coffee break to eat. You can't. It's got to be on at all times when you're in the field. So a full helmet. It's damn hard to create that's, that's not claustrophobic all the time. I tried everything. So finally, the Apache has retractable shields. It's like the movies, really. It's the real thing. You press the button, the shields come into the face. When he's not using it, the helm never comes off. He just retracts the shields. Why I'm demonstrating this, and, and, and the machine, this is my baby. Right? This, took, this took hundreds and hundreds of hours. This is going to be destroyed when I'm done. The helmet will be fine, you shoot it all day long, but the face is going to be gone. That's its job. Breakaway pump, think of a car, the new technology in it, why you survive in a vehicle, it crumples. That's what this has in it, and it has a breakaway technology. It has a crossover technology where this can be mandated into sports, hockey, football. Think of hockey now, uh, as of last week, it's mandated that all NHL players have to wear at least a half shield. Well, when I do this demonstration, come on, blood. Let's get this done here. Get the M16 over there. It's not real, don't panic. I want to swap them. Uh, what I'm going to demonstrate is, uh, again, the reason why I'm using this helm is the Apache isn't built, and this is the only one I got left. All the other ones have tested with bullets and bombs, but I've never done this test against me. So, yeah, I could die. Dead serious. But I have to trust the fact that I test everything in labs before I do it on myself like that. That's why I knew I was going to walk out of the truck, because I'm not terrified very much. But I walked out of the truck a little strange, and so were our boys if that was on. This technology is on the Apache, and it's the crossover because it's not the helm you're looking at. The Apache is much more sleek, much smaller, and the shield is retractable. It has the BBCT inside of it, ballistic breakaway pump technology. So to understand, I'm going to demonstrate. Hold on, this one. I'm going to demonstrate. My brother's going to stand here. A SWAT officer. Okay? In uh, a home situation, he's got to come in or he's got to come into a building. He's got his boys behind him. You see them all the time come in like this? They're only wearing a half helmet, you see. A 
lot of them get shot in the face when they're dead. I'm going to demonstrate if they were wearing an Apache with this technology, the BBCT, and he's coming around the corner, what I want to demonstrate is a shotgun blast in the face. My brother's 200 pounds, it's a real baseball bat. You kill a man instantly. So my point to all the idiots out there, there's so many of these boy. There's no sporting helmet in the world. All they did the tests, not riot control, not football, not hockey, not NASA car racing. You put a helmet on the face, get an average size guy, 200 pounds with a baseball bat, point blank, everything he's got to the face, you're not gonna get hurt kids. You're gonna die, so don't do it at home. Jeez, not a lot of idiots out there. My point is, it doesn't matter if Brock Lesnar is standing here, or Mark McGuire. It can handle five times what you're gonna see my brothers doing. But I'm gonna simulate, put the helm on, SWAT officer coming around the corner, shotgun blast the face. Picking up the bullets, that, that's easy. That, that, that's not his problem. That's not what's going to kill him with a full helm, with a bulletproof uh, shield in the front. It's, it's the hydraulic shock. That blast will kill him. Not so with this technology. And for the people that can't grasp that, and I don't mean that in a bigger way, I mean, you know, shotgun blast, okay, think of our boy, right? Think of God on skates, Sidney Crosby. Seriously. Okay? Love him. If he was standing, I want you to ask yourself for a second, because some of us are going to try to kill him. If you had Sidney Crosby standing right here, who just spent a year over because of concussion, because of morons and hot. If you had Sidney Crosby standing right here with the exact helmet he wears, exact helmet, I put my life in the state. I don't piss down over the back, the helmet's raining. If Crosby was standing right here with the helmet he wears on the ice, with his half shield, I want you to ask yourself one question when my brother takes my face off with this technology. If that was my brother hitting Crosby with that half shield he wears on his helmet, would the kid get up and ever skate again? You ask yourself that. No, he wouldn't. But if I had seen Crosby and I took his helmet with his shield and put this technology in that, my brother would lay him over on the stage, he'd get up as quick as I'm going to get up, and he'd say one thing, he'd make me two dozen because I got a team that would love him. So here we go. Now, if this doesn't work, I'd like to answer a question right now that I'm asking all these screams of Crockett Grizzly. How come we didn't see your wife in the movie? She's going to get blamed for that. But I'd like to say, <laughs> my wife is sitting there, and I love the baby girl. We've been with her for 22 years married. She gives me the strength I am, and she makes me the man I am today. I love you, baby girl. I'm a girl. Alright, I'll do SWAT. Do you think I sit in the truck? Thank you. 